Chris Hampton, uh, trumpet player, composer, also flugelhorn, and arranger, and a mentor of mine from many years ago, who really got me into arranging and composing music. And, and I'm honored that he took one of my compositions and he's arranged it for his group, Marcus Hampton uh, Sextet. It's going to play in the Blue Room on uh, July 11th. And as it is with your music as a composer, we've talked about this there. You don't know what's going to happen to your music. You don't know if anyone's going to receive it or not. So when someone takes your piece, and, and he transcribed this, he didn't have the lead sheet or anything, he just listened to the recording. Hamp, you were talking about my choices in terms of the cadences. And what I found interesting about that was your perspective of making those types of choices. Would you talk about that a bit? Well, uh, basically, uh, when you're arranging something, especially when we're talking about arrangements, and uh, so there's several things, factors that go into uh, writing a song or writing an arrangement and so forth. And uh, I was taught, though, that you're going to transcribe an arrangement for somebody, which is the case of your arrangement. First, I, I would say that I, I like the arrangement of the song itself. It had a, a good melody and also has a good interlude. You know, and that's what drove me to, to the song. And, and I know that there is one of your uh, songs you recorded years ago that we talked about, I guess, years ago. But I never gave them more thought until we got together again and then found out that, that the arranger, this particular arranger on there was the last song on, on your recording. And I found I liked it. And then I thought about, you know, I, I wanted to do something to give back to uh, what you have done for me, as maybe as well as you thought I might have done for you. And so, with that in, in, in tell, uh, I said, well, let me try to see if I can get transcribe it and have my band play it at the next week of performance. But I found out that, that uh, next, uh, the, that arrangement, man, it was not easy to, to transcribe, you know, because you use the, the chilling system to write your arrangement. I just use my old basic way, you know, the triads and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> to come up with something like that you write, which is I like, I like what it was done, and it's a, it's a it's a good learning tool as as well. But you got to really know the children so you can to know what's really going on. Cause it doesn't go basically where you expect it to go, like some arrangements do. Oh, it's not typical. That's I understand what you're saying. Right. Now, uh, there's a gentleman who I consider the foremost scholar, scholar of the Schillinger mm -hmm. system. His name is Philip de Tullio. Okay. And every Thursday, he gives master classes for free. Mm -hmm. And I'll hook you up with that. And I think that you should meet Phil. Mm -hmm. and he's in Boston right now. And, okay. And uh, I think it would be good for you just to have a conversation with him because what you're saying are things that we've discussed, or anybody who has studied the Schillinger method of musical composition, yeah, okay. it you can arrive at any style of music that's in a the, unique that's, way, that's, and that's, that's the thing. See, the Schillinger system, from what I'm learning from you about the Schillinger system, just not going into any great detail, mm -hmm. but the Schillinger system will keep it frees up. All the things that you it might, does. might uh, try to figure out what to do. Or yeah, what, there's what no such thing as writer's block. Right. You can just write. And see, yeah. and what I'm learning is that writing a composition mm -hmm. uh, is trial and error to a point. Well, but, but it's, only, it's, it's wonderful the way that you used to write. I remember you would sit down, we roomed together in the army van in Germany, you would sit down at the piano, you'd have an idea, and you'd sit down at the piano, and like three minutes later, you've got an entire tune. Yeah. And it's already fully formed. Everything is there. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Part you hear what the tenor and alto does or whatever, whatever your instrumentation is. And function, chord function, and cycles, you had those mastered so well that I, that used to just be something that would motivate me to practice, practice. He just knows this inherently. He mm -hmm. knows it's supposed to go here. He doesn't even have to know the tune. Yeah. You know, particularly if it's from that era, the standard right. era, you're you're like I'm, I don't, using, I'm using standard standard. Yeah, uh, yeah. You don't even have to know the song, but you but can see hear that the, that all derived from uh, self talk to a point. Okay, okay. And what okay. I'm saying self talk is by different people that I ask about certain things about arranging for different ensembles. Ah, okay, okay. So when I first tried to get into writing arrangement, 
I just played the chord and I'm, I'm, then I'm here I'm with the melody. But mm -hmm. I, I didn't mm -hmm. really know if that chord was really fitting that melody because the, the bass line, and I was taught from Shaka for especially, and people like him, and, and, right. and, and, and Mr. Marat, Joe, Joe Marat, trumpet player. In right, the right. Uh, and Tom also, wrote uh, several arrangements for army bands. Yeah. Like he wrote that arrangement for so George on my mind. He so, so he told me that in order to be correct, for what you got on top of everything, mm -hmm. you, know, you got to get your bass line first. Oh, exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah, that's the first thing you got to get. That way, when you put a, a maybe a, a, a minor or a major or augmented or diminished chord on top, mm -hmm. that bass line going to define what, the, what that chord really is, you know. Right, And right. the same thing about you find notes in your melody that's not in the chord, so they are passing to mm -hmm. tones or mm -hmm. passing chords or whatever, you know, or clusters if you if you get, get really crazy, you know. You can be so <laughs> far up in the extension of the chord that it really right. doesn't relate to the triad or the seven chord is right. what you're saying. And yes. Then, yeah. And then that depends on the core, how you want to use the core, you know, as far as oh. you're, 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 thinking, yeah, yeah. You're, thinking about, you're thinking about your orchestration, what instrumentation you're going to have playing mm -hmm. what. You know, to make that, now, that was one thing I wanted to get to before we got too far away from this arrangement. Yeah. You did an arrangement for a sextet, and when I recorded this, there were two of us that did this. It was myself, I played alto on, on it, mm -hmm. but a young man uh, at the time who had just graduated from Indiana School of Music, David Baker and those guys out there, yeah. a piano player from Chicago named Benjamin Lewis. We had never met in person. We just mm -hmm. uh, did many, collaborated on this MIDI arrangement online. Okay. And he took the final, once we got the MIDI side done, he took it into a studio in Chicago and they put the sample and sounds to it. And of course he had his piano solo and all that on that. And then he sent me the, an ADAT tape. I took it into a studio in Lebanon, Missouri, which was an old RCA uh, radio station studio. Okay. They had a nice board and all that. And I just put my saxophone over it and that's what you hear. But it sounds like a lot of people think it sounds like a whole group. It's not a whole group. We no. just we wrote all of the parts in there, and then your arrangement. I like what you did. You took the interlude and you used that as an introduction. You you moved it around. You have the essence of the melody, the, mm -hmm. the head and the bridge of the song. But I was really impressed. Number one, that you were able to transcribe that because there's a lot of, of changing of key yeah. without the key. <laughs> you know, Slipping half steps, you yeah. <laughs> but like we talked about, we talked about a while ago. Yeah, we went down to an F major. Yeah, and uh, I'm thinking it's gonna go down to maybe E flat. With the right, map, right. Because that's the line. E yeah. flat, but no, it go down to D flat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had, that's why I had a hard time hearing it. <laughs> But it, but was it sounded good, yeah. yeah. It was challenging, yeah. Me that I, that I, I'm to, really proud of uh, the fact that I was able to do the arrangement and get through it fairly well with my bad ears and so forth now. That uh, I'm still having the problem that I'm not really happy or sure about those two measures we talked about. Right. You know, and and I mean, in the context of what you've done here with the arrangement, mm -hmm. the, the way that you have it function into that next phrase or sub phrase using yeah. those chords is, is acceptable with everything and it sounds good and I, yeah. I I look at that I looked at that when I saw it and, mm -hmm. and heard you do it I took that as a ranger's license and that's cool it sounds it sounds yeah. good the essence of the tune you you nailed all the chord progressions even the even the half step going from D flat to D you got that and that yeah. was uh, most people don't catch that they don't catch that it went up a half step no. when you go into the melody and what I was really impressed with is is how you took the song, owned it basically, and said, "Okay, I'm going to write this now for my group, which which has like some great players in there. You're, yourself on trumpet, then you've got Brad Gregory on tenor, yeah. and uh, Steve Decker on on trombone, yeah. and then Chris Clark's playing your piano. You've got James Ward on bass, and then Michael Warren. It's it's going to sound really cool. Sure. And you harmonized that interlude at the beginning, didn't you? Uh, no, but, not, not the first one, the, the second one. Oh, okay, uh, okay. The harmonized, the, the, the actual, did it, did it. the actual turn back, you know. Da, 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 da. See, I, was, I couldn't figure out how did they get back, because I heard it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I said, okay, what 
chords or two chords. Now when you go back to the mountain, yeah. 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 it's like it's almost like it won't like when it, the way still in chords work. If you got something going on like where we go from here? Normally you probably go to a B flat, you know. But uh we went to a D flat. this little discussion okay. interview and I'm also going to post a link to the uh, the original version that you took this from from the Time Flies original master album okay. and that way people can hear oh, yeah. in yeah. context yeah. And, yeah. And, and to hear this arrangement with, with Hamp's great group come uh, July 11th, 11th yeah. at the Blue Sorry. Room Sorry. on 18th and Vine and at 9.30. Yeah, and they're going to play a concert set as part of the ARC label week. It should be, uh, that's why I want you to get there in town, because it should probably be the second song. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, he's got his set already taken care of. But Marcus Hampton from the Hampton family, uh, Lionel Hampton, Slide Hampton, and uh, just honored to talk with you, Hamp, and, and I'm honored that you did an arrangement of this this composition. Well, I'm glad you know, so I, I appreciate it, huh? I really wanted to do, do it for several reasons, like I said, but to honor the, your 